And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. Welcome, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. This is a continuation of the series, The Judgment of God. Sin is the issue. Today, we will be touching on the topic of revilers from a day-to-day -day perspective. And we will be examining our hearts biblically and discerning if we are still living in sin. This series is to bring awareness to those who believe in Christ. Also, those who may not understand, but through self-evaluation really wants to make a change and turn from sin. Let's begin. The Bible in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 10 states in context that no revilers will inherit the kingdom of God. And it reads, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. First, let's empathize on this matter and biblically comprehend the truth. How is the text revilers defined? In the Greek, it is defined as severe abusive criticism or slander, which is evil speaking. It is also recognized as making false and damaging statements about someone, which goes hand in hand with a lie. And if you didn't know, Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 says that all liars will burn in the lake of fire. So the question is, do you know God and do you fear his judgment? The Bible also speaks of another scripture in particular, Colossians chapter 3 verse 8. But now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. With further examination of the passages, we see here clearly the manifestations of revowler. You may say, what does this mean? Well, Jesus or Yeshua HaMashiach has already told us if we would like to follow him, we must deny ourselves. And it reads, then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Luke chapter 9 verse 23. Okay, okay. You may be wondering, how is this obtainable? Well, it's easy. We have to say no to our ways and say yes to God's ways. You see, when we deny ourselves, it tells God that we love him and we desire to keep his commandments by faith, through grace, by the power of his Holy Spirit. He allows us to walk in newness of life. Therefore, we are no longer in bondage to sin and we practice our faith, which is the righteousness and fruits of Christ Jesus. Thereby, self-denial is discipline and expected from the Lord. Indeed, we all make many mistakes. For if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. 
let's take a deeper look and see what else is associated with the word reviler. Gossip. It is everywhere. However, in the sight of mankind, it is taken lightly. But in the sight of unholy and righteous God, this action is worthy of death. The Greek meaning stands as a secret slanderer, a detractor. In other words, it is someone who talks bad about someone behind their back. Whether it's a so-called joke or intentional, God will judge you righteously. It is also defined as casual or unconstrained conversation or reports about other people, typically involving details that are not confirmed as being true, which can be considered a lie or something that is none of the other party's business, which all falls in the category of revilers. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue, keepeth his soul from troubles. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Please, my brothers and sisters, I pray that you are receiving these words, for it is only to help you. Let's proceed. Next we have Backbiter. This act is similar in many different ways. The Greek defines the text as stated, one, defamer, two, evil speaker. Basically, someone who loves to speak disrespectfully about a person's reputation in a dangerous way. Mm. It is also defined as to speak maliciously about someone who is not present. In other words, someone who is speaking about doing or causing harm to anyone who is not present, which is also tied to murder. Thus, gossip and backbiting is sin, which is entangled and categorized to the term revilers. So, moving on, before we conclude, the question is, what have you learned? One, this presentation has brought to your attention biblically that it is a well-known fact that any practicer of reviling in any sort or manner will not inherit the kingdom of God unless they repent and turn from this iniquity. Remember, don't forget, God called us to be holy. Two, We were also able to categorize and connect biblically the terms gossip and backbiters, which has been traced directly back to the phrase revowler. Now, before we conclude, let's touch on a few things. If Jesus is our prime example, according to scripture, on how we should live our lives, then let's see what he would do when presented with the same circumstance. Let's see what he commands us to do. For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed.
brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, Yeshua, the one the world calls Jesus, clearly abstained from participating in reviling and commands us to follow and obey, which is simply mimicking him. The scriptures tells us that those who partake of this sinful action will end up in hell forever, which is a place of judgment. In closing, ask yourself, how does God feel about you participating in reviling? And emotionally, what has this tragic practice done to you and others? God's love is his Torah. And without it, there's only chaos. Choose Jesus and repent of your sins and go and get it right with your neighbors. Until next time, Shalom.